Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. With over 110,000 confirmed cases in 113 countries and territories, the rapid spread of COVID-19 has today been declared a pandemic by the World Health Organization. While Fiji has so far remained coronavirus-free, we are not immune from this pandemic's economic ramifications. The latest reports estimate that the net losses to the world economy will be upwards of $2 trillion this year, with global growth dramatically slowing to half of 1%. The recent oil price war between Saudi Arabia and Russia has unpended global energy markets, throwing another wrench into an already volatile environment. Nations of all sizes are already facing the specter of economic recession. The world economy has not seen a threat of this scale since the global financial crisis. But let's remember, back in 2008, it wasn't trade wars, tariffs or unilateralism that pulled the world economy back from the brink. What proved successful was an unprecedented, internationally coordinated effort to refuel and re-spark global growth. Once again, we must achieve the highest levels of global cooperation and goodwill if we are to succeed in bringing badly needed stability back to our markets and economies. Here in Fiji, our situation demands extraordinary actions to minimize the brunt of the global economic downturn. We cannot risk waiting until the close of the financial year to re-evaluate our spending priorities and take stock of our revenue streams. There are key expenditures that must be made to ensure the protection and continuation of the Fijian way of life that includes our people's health, their jobs, their businesses and their food security. Fiji is fortunate to counter this crisis from a position of historic financial strength on the back of our longest ever economic expansion. It is clear the time to act is now. And that is why we will be announcing a new COVID-19 response budget on 26 March of this year, which is in about a couple of weeks' time. We've already moved quickly and decisively to prevent a large-scale outbreak of COVID-19 in Fiji. As the risk of a global outbreak became clear, we cut off travel from mainland China, Italy, Iran and South Korea and massively stepped up screening at all ports of entry in the country. We should all applaud the Ministry of Health and Medical Services for the quick actions and professionalism in handling our nationwide response effort. Our medical teams are ready to identify, isolate and treat any case of the virus in the country and do everything possible to prevent a widespread breakout, outbreak. Sorry. We've already allocated a number of unbudgeted expenditures to support our preparatory efforts, including ordering thermal scanners to install at our ports of entry. Tourism and travel-related industries can be the hardest hit by a viral outbreak. Fear surrounding the COVID-19 outbreak has meant many people are not traveling. Accordingly, Fiji's tourism numbers are down, and we can expect them to remain muted for some time. This will have a serious short-term impact, as tourism is the single largest contributor to our GDP. Global air carriers are anticipating projected losses in revenue upwards of $100 billion. Our national carrier, Fiji Airways, has seen a serious drop in demand on many of its international routes. The regional supply chains across the Asia-Pacific and globally have been eviscerated by the viral outbreak, with vital flows of goods and labor disrupted or ended entirely. This has a direct impact on capital projects around the world, and developing countries particularly will need to look at new source, will need to look at new source markets outside of China. Lower frequency along shipping routes, in particular from North Asia, can raise the cost of shipping for all goods brought by sea, even to and from countries like New Zealand. Fiji, of course, has built many strong economic partnerships around our region and around the world. If you look at a nation like Maldives, which is largely dependent on the Chinese and European markets, their tourism sector is taking a brutal beating, putting many of their people's livelihoods in peril. Luckily, Fiji is not overtly reliant on the Chinese market. We have a responsible mix of tourism source markets 
to hedge against isolated disruptions. There is still tremendous potential in our tourism markets in Australia and New Zealand, both of which do not have large-scale outbreaks of the virus. To date, Fiji Airways' key routes to Australia, New Zealand and North America are seeing reasonably healthy numbers. We will be actively exploring new measures of support for our tourism partners to take full advantage of these and other opportunities. Over the past several weeks, we have been meeting with business and industry leaders to understand exactly how they are affected by and coping with this global slowdown and supply chain disruptions, and how we, as a team, can work together, explore possible fiscal initiatives, remain resolute and ride this through. As we've already told many of you in person, your government's ears are open to listen, open to listen, and our support is steadfast and assured. The team at the Ministry of Economy has been in overdrive preparing a COVID-19 response budget. As we prepare, if anyone would like to contribute to our planning, the Ministry of Economy will be accepting electronic submissions over email at budgetconsultations at economy.gov.fj. Rest assured, we will be leveraging every channel of growth at our disposal to keep our economy prosperous, keep features employed and keep our businesses afloat, all while putting our people's well-being first. Our economy remains under prudent and responsible management. We will not hesitate to make tough decisions with a view towards our long-term economic prospects. It is vital our partners in the private sector take a similar view of the future. And just like in our recovery from the global financial crisis, collaboration is key. Because while nations are shutting their borders to travel, we must continue to work across borders and each of us must play our part. World leaders must find ways to protect economies of all sizes and not play games of economic nationalism when lives and livelihoods are at stake. At home, we cannot politicize this pandemic. We must remain objective without falling prey to sensationalism. Likewise, business leaders must recognize their role in our economic resilience. Keep your people employed. So long as it is safe and sustainable to do so, keep your businesses running. This is a test of perseverance that we must prove strong enough to endure and know that your government will work with you in close collaboration to support you and the Fijians you employ. We look forward to sharing more in-depth details on the measures we'll be taking to respond to the situation in Parliament on 26 March in a couple of weeks' time. Thank you very much.